idea other than um, the things that you said. I think, I think the first day, I think I said to you that as you're thinking about your career, you needed to be thinking about how you could sell yourself. Remember that? So we're, we're finishing off with people who have to go out and yes. So as you're listening, and I loved the way you all were just really thinking. I can tell you were thinking about what Dr. Mose was saying to you about you. Because this is what this is all about, right? <laughs> I've always talked with my hands. So as we listen to our next presenter, she's going to tell you more about herself. You be thinking about what you want to know from her that might be helpful to you. And our next presenter is, Kayla's going to introduce her to you. Her name is? Please welcome Dr. White.
That's a very good answer. That's a very good answer. We're talking about health professions. That answer talks about health. Okay, that's a very good answer. Um, I am a doctor. I am not a medical doctor. I am a psychotherapist. That's a big word. Say psychotherapist. Psychotherapist. Okay. So the reason that I have these tissues is, as Kayla has said, but I have another reason, being that in my profession, I work with people who are having everyday problems, okay, and they come to my office to get help with resolutions, to talk, to get someone to be on their side, to have an advocate, that's a big word. What does advocate mean? Um, I told you what it meant just before I said it. Person that's on your side. Very good, very good, very good. To have someone that will not put their business in the street. So we're talking about confidentiality, privacy, and if they feel like they're sad or angry or stressed out, then they can express their emotions. Hint, hint. This is a tool that's connected with people who are expressing their emotions. Who said that? Very good. Because they cry. So, someone who is a psychotherapist, psychologist, counselor, who have their own office, need to always have a box of tissues present in the office and available for use and within an arm's reach. So, who wants to just pull a tissue? Okay, we're not going to make you cry. I don't have any onions. <laughs> okay, okay, and then that's what they do. So this is what I use. Okay. Now, I have water. Kayla, you're very, very <coughs> alert. Let's try someone else. This young man. What's your name? Andre. Okay. I have water in my office all the time. Why do I have water? If that is correct. I, I, I definitely talk sometimes. Sometimes I'm listening. My throat gets dry, and I do drink a lot of water. Yes. Um, so when they are kind of upset, you get a lot of water. It's going to come down. True. 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 Water. Is, sometimes water is better than taking a pill. Water is very refreshing, it's cleansing, it's purifying. Why do you think when you get baptized, you go into water? You either go down into water, you get sprinkled with water, depending upon the religious orientation. And also, because I am a member of the health profession, I am trying to promote healthy lifestyles. So I want people to drink water. So I give it to them when they come in. All of the reasons are very good. To calm people down when you're thirsty, and also just to get in the habit of drinking water every day, a lot of water. You'll be amazed at what water can do to clarify your thought process, to help you organize your information for the test tomorrow, of course, to quench your thirst, to calm you down, and to purify your body. Okay? So, that's why I use water. You want to talk about the treasure chest? Yes! Yes! yes. yes. Okay. I have a treasure chest that has more props and goodies. Oh, 
Okay. So the purpose of this presentation is talk is to talk about health, the health professions. So I am going to talk about a selected few. Can't talk about all of them. I can talk about some of them. And I would like to get you to tell me what you think those are. I think I'm going to talk about four, four today. Camera? Okay. Okay, keep in mind that uh, that would be like a uh, nutritionist or a dietitian that is uh, part of the health profession, but that's not one that I am going to talk about. Um, fruit. Fruits? Okay, I'm going to try Kyrie. Okay, all of those are health professions. Hint, hint. What I do is I work as a psychotherapist. I talk to people who have problems. Uh, psychologists, counselors, psychotherapists, they help people with problem situations. Yes, Kamala. True. Let me give you some hints. These are occupations. There is a big book. You can go online, too. The name of the book is the Occupational Outlook Handbook. And you can find every possible health-related profession in there. Um, you can find nurses, doctors, Pharmacists, x-ray technicians, medical assistants, psychologists, dietitians, all of that stuff. So I have selected a few. Let me pause. I'm going to try to get you to put your thinking cap on. How many of you want to be nurses when you grow up? <laughs> How many of you would like to work in the health profession when you grow up? Okay, what would you like to do? Okay, a pediatrician. That's a specialist. That's a doctor that works with children. Very good. That is one of the careers that we're going to talk about. Any other ideas? Yes. I'm going to be a pediatric assistant, like the assistant that like, guides them, like helps them like, when they need something. Okay. Somebody okay, a PA, a, a physician's assistant, right next to the doctor, assisting the doctor. Okay. Physician assistant and <clears throat> pediatric work. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, nursing, psychologists, pharmacists, and medical assistants, okay? But before we start talking about those careers, why don't I give you a little journey about myself? Would you like to know some things about me? Sure. Okay. All right. Well, my name is Dr. Veronica White, and I am a native of Jacksonville, Florida. That means that that's where I was born and raised. I was born in Jacksonville. I am a member of a very large family. There were 10 people in my family. There were seven girls and three boys in a small house. So we learned how to live together peacefully, <laughs> live together peacefully so we wouldn't hurt each other. Okay? Yes. Yes. We learned to live together peacefully. 
I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember, but uh, some of the beds were smaller than others, so some of them were regular sized beds. Um, I went to school in Jacksonville. I went to high school uh, at William and Range, which was a high school at that time. Guess what? Guess what? Can you imagine going to school and going to assembly? Can you imagine? Listen to me. Can you imagine? going to school in an assembly and your principal told everybody that you're six million dollar students. Can you imagine that? Just imagine that. That's what our principal told us every single time we went to general assembly. Now, if someone tells you that, what does that do for you? What does that do for your confidence? Yes. It tells you that you can do anything as long as you put your mind to it. Absolutely right. <laughs> Self-esteem. That's right. Very good. <laughs> what? Okay. Well, you're absolutely right, and I'm going to pass this on to you. You all are six million dollar students. Okay. Give yourself a hand. You can do and be anything you want to, okay? More about me. I love sports, um, but I really, really, really love NBA basketball. Me too. Really, really, really love NBA basketball. I enjoy, I enjoy the real simple things, taking a walk in the park, I try to lead a healthy lifestyle. I, I try to exercise. I power walk or run probably 15 to 20 miles a week. A week. Um, I was the first person in my family to go to college. So I did not have a lot of the opportunities that you I just remember Miss Shannon, who was my teacher, my fourth grade teacher. I remember her. It may have been fifth grade because she was such a creative teacher. And we took language arts. It was an English class. And she had a contest. And she wanted all of us to learn poetry. And she inspired us to learn poetry by having a contest and the winner of the contest would, would get a prize, okay? And um, I actually learned poetry because she had so much passion. She was really into it. She really, really, really had very good teaching skills and she was very motivational. She was a positive influence in my life. These are my teachers. Miss Blackshear. Ms. Blackshear was the music teacher. Ms. Blackshear taught us Beethoven, Bach. She taught us about the 50 great composers. She told us which ones were blind, but yet they became a great composer, a great musician. She played the piano very, very well. And as my deceased father would say, she did not take any wooden nickels. What does that mean? Oh, do you want to go? Should we not take no tolerance? Very good. Excellent. She did not tolerate disrespect. She did not tolerate coming into her classroom unprepared. She did not tolerate being rude or being ugly towards other people. And she had a Phrase, I will never forget that. She will put you out of her class. You want to know how she would do it? You want to know? Yes. She's, she's, yes. Were you going to say something? I, I see a No. 
<laughs> no. Whipping, whipping, is, whipping teach, teaches aggressive behavior. It teaches you how to whip your children. And it perpetuates the cycle of aggression. There are other ways to discipline. There are other ways to discipline. Her way was time out. I'm not saying that, you know, you, you know, can't get a spanking. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, I'm saying what I'm saying. But her way was time out, and guess what she would say? Get up, young man, leave my class, let the door hit you back. Get up, young lady, leave my class, let, let the door hit you back. She would have a very firm face, facial expression, and they got up. And she didn't have that problem the next time. Yes. <laughs> That's a new one. I like that one. Okay. Any questions so far? Yes, young man. Um, the kind of you use a company. That is a very um, good question. Um, I. I think that some people cry because they need to cry, and crying is not all bad. It's an emotional release, and you are taking advantage of, you know, the opportunity to release your 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 pain and your sadness. Um, I have the tissues available. And I pause. I allow the person to cry. And when they're done crying, I give them that respect. I respect their emotional release. And then when they're done crying, I might say something like, um, do you, you want to continue? And they'll say yes, or they'll shake their head. Yes. Very good question. Um, I see couples, I see husband and wives, girlfriends, boyfriends who are having trouble and they get mad at each other. And sometimes they start screaming and throwing books in my office. Uh, that does not happen very often. I, uh, I let people know when they first come to see me what the rules are. And so part of the rules would be that we're going to respect each other, um, no yelling. Uh, if you feel like your anger is getting completely out of control, feel free to leave the session and to come back in when you've calmed down. Because I'm not going to be calming someone down who's, who's screaming, but I will calm them down once they are able to focus on what is going on. When you're really, really angry and out of control, you don't really hear, you don't really respond to what people are trying to guide you towards or help you with. Okay? Um, any other questions? Yes. Yes. I have. I have. That does not have happened uh, a lot because if I cried every time someone cried, they, they would say, well, I'm not coming to see her. She's just as sad and upset as I am. That does not happen a lot, but it does occasionally happen. And it, I think it, it's a message. It sends a message to the person. It depends, but it could send a message to the person that she, she really understands what I'm talking about when I'm but boo hoo crying? No. No. <laughs> um, when they cry and, they, and you can't hear them, what do you, what do you do? I wait until they are composed, you know, relaxed, and until they stop crying. <laughs> now, now, when we're talking about children, I see children too. I see children your age. I see children your age. So when we're talking about children, we do not hit children. We do not hit children. 
and uh, I do not allow children to hit themselves. Because that is very a very dangerous habit to start, to hit yourself. That's known as self-abuse or self-destructive behavior. And I used to work with a group of people who did that, and they had to wear a football helmet because they banged their heads. These were people who were mentally handicapped. They banged their heads. That's how they expressed their anger, by banging their heads. Can you imagine? You bang your head long enough, you hit the right spot, you don't have brain damage. They wore helmets, football helmets, called headbangers. Headbangers didn't have any friends. Don't you want to have friends? You can't bang your head and have friends. Okay? Yes. So, like, this is your office? Yes. Yes. I have an office. It's a nice office. It has a leather couch. It has a leather um, chair. It has an ottoman. It has a bookshelf. And it, it has um, my diplomas and degrees on the wall. That is required. If you are a professional, you must have a license. You must have a license to practice independently. And you get that license from the state. What did I say? Just say your name. You don't have to get it all right. Just tell me one word that I said. Okay, I'm going to say it again. If you are a professional, you must have a license to practice. What did I just say? Okay, very good. And you're going to be a good listener for the rest of the presentation, right? You're going to be a good listener, right? Okay, um, any questions? Do you need to take a break? Okay. Okay, it'll be okay in about two minutes. Yes, sir. Have any of your colleagues been sued for malpractice? No. We, do, we try to do the right things. Here you go. Okay, um, the amount of education that is required to become a psychologist or a PhD level clinician like myself is that you have to graduate from high school, go to college for four years, then you have to go to college for about four to five more years. at least. So that's 12 plus 4, to be quite honest, plus 6. That's what you have to do. Okay? And you have to be successful in order to get to the next level. You have to graduate to get to the next level. How, how much money does a psychologist or uh, people in private practice make? 16000 How much do that? No. 23000 What I'm going to do is I'm going to let you all put all of your heads together, so I want you to get into groups. And we're going to start the count. How many people do we have? Two, four, six, eight, okay, 10, 12, and 14. Okay, so we want maybe um, four groups. Four groups of uh, four groups of fours. We're going to have two people. Let's get three groups of uh, let's get three groups of fours, and then we're going to have two people left over. Okay, so we're going to count. It's going to be one, two, three, four, and then you're going to be one, two, three, four, and you're going to start over. Okay, you're one. Okay, so go ahead and count. No, you count. You're one. You count your own number. Okay, your number, sweetheart? Two. Your number. 
Four. You're not. Very good. Two, three, four. Good. One, two, three, four. Excellent. One, two. Okay. I want all the ones to get together. All the twos to get together. And all the threes to get together. One of the things that I also do in my office, I know you're moving around, but I want you to listen to. Okay. You know, the threes can stay here. You, you can do you know, you can you can probably use you can probably use two groups on one table, okay? Quickly, quickly. Okay, the fours go here. Fours here. Fours here. Threes there. Twos here and ones there. Twos are here. So we have one, we have one. Make some space in between so you look like a group. So leave a little gap in between so you look like a group. So this is one, one, two, three. Okay, we have an extra person. Okay, we have four. Okay, move down one, one chair. Thank you. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, very good. Uh, you're going to need to um, have your body facing me. Okay, now, I'm looking at the clock. You have two minutes, or should I say one minute, to decide who's going to be your group leader. No. One leader. No, you're going to decide. Who's going to be your group leader? You're the group leader. Okay, let's go here. <laughs> okay. okay, group one, who's the leader stand? Group two, leader stand. Group three, leader stand. Group four, leader stand. Okay. Okay, you can sit down now. Group one leader, you can hold the treasure chest. Group two leader, you can hold the brochure. Group three leader. Group three leader. Tissues. Group four leader. Okay. You gotta really listen. This is important. I do not want to hear a pin to drop. Okay. You're going to be doctors. Group one, you're going to be doctors. I have a handout for each one. Group two, you're going to be nurses. Group three, you're going to be psychologists. 
Group four, group four, you're going to be medical assistants. Okay. Okay, this is your assignment. And you're going to demonstrate your ability to work together in a group. Groups are very important. Part of what I do, I do group process. So I see people in groups. I see young people in groups. I do study groups or social skills groups, self-esteem groups for women. Okay? So groups are very, very important. If you can function in a small group, you can function as an employee when you grow up. You can, you can function with your siblings and your family. You can function in a larger group. You're going to have about mm, 10 minutes to do this assignment. You have a sheet of paper. Some of you have more than one sheet. I will come around and I will, I will help each one of you, uh, each one of you in the group, okay? What you need to do is identify your health career, and it's on the paper. Identify the educational requirements and identify the salary. It's like an open book test. Okay, so can you repeat? Can you repeat? Kyrie is not, where Kyrie? Where's Kyrie? Can you repeat, Kyrie, what the, the assignment is? Three things. You have to find the salary, the educational requirement, and and identify your profession. So I have I have some cards, okay? I have some index cards. So you can use that. You just have to do three things. And then, and then I want you to, to tell me if, you don't need those, because she has just one a piece, one a piece. Then I want you to tell me if this is a profession you're interested in. One a piece, okay? One, one a piece. Okay. Okay, look at the clock. Okay, you have until a quarter till. This is going to be something you have to do really fast. You need a little bit more time than that? No, no. Okay, I'm going to write the, the task on the board. And, uh, did you did you hear the last one? The last the last requirement, the last task is that you need to be personal. What is it about this profession that you like and is this a profession that you would like to go into? Okay? Okay, what you need to do is you need to identify Career. Um, what education? Do you need? What is the salary?
how we're going to use the treasure chest. Group one has possession of the treasure chest, so they get the first dibs on the treasure chest. So group one needs to uh, go into the treasure chest and find a prop that matches their career. But before they do that, the leader has to stand up and answer one, two, three, and four. Leader? Leader, stand. You work in private practice either with uh, associates or partners, or you work by yourself. It means that you have your own office. Okay, the fourth one. Um, my 